What is going on guys? Welcome to your 53rd Java tutorial and this is pretty much a continuation of the 52nd one and there's probably going to be a 54th one but um, just a real quick view what we did is pretty much already uh, if you didn't watch 52 for some reason we just built a window and put four things in it <coughs> and that's uh, that's pretty much it and now what we're going to do is pretty much add some functionality to this and what we're going to say is alright when you enter text in one of those text fields and press enter what we want to do is pop up another box saying what you entered like when a user would type in something and it says like a verification or something so let's get right to it now what we need to do is the first thing that we're going to need to do is build an action listener object so what what this means is we have four text fields waiting on the screen and they're pretty much dumb and they don't do anything right now what we want them to do is to add some brains to them and have them waiting on the screen in listening it's called and when you listen you're pretty much just waiting for an event to happen so right now they just look pretty they're not even waiting for anything so what we want to say is alright text boxes listen for something to happen and when that happens we want you to execute a bunch of code so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to build another class to execute the code but this class I'm going to build an object for this class before I even build the class so the class name is going to be the handler and we're going to get some errors right here but that's fine and I'm just going to name my object handler and this is going to be equals new handler class and if you're saying alright where is this handler class we didn't build it yet but I will we promise so actually hold on new the handler there we go and what this does is it pretty much builds an action listener object so now we're gonna make a new class later on um, that you'll see what this does later but what we need to do is add this object to each of the items so item one what we need to do is add action listener and what this takes as an argument is the object we just created so that's why we need to do that and the object you can see it is called handler so handler right like that and we need to do this for each object so let's go ahead and copy this copy and paste paste I'm two I'm three and of course our password which is password field right there and add add action listener and this is of course going to take the handler argument again so now we have an object of the class the handler which we didn't make yet but that's what we're going to do right now so once you uh let me make sure here's jframe here's the one class here's where one class ends or pretty much our constructor and now here's another thing i'm going to tell you um this pretty much whole thing is our constructor which is pretty much a method for um this tuna class and you're probably thinking all right i'm going to build a new class i'm going to build it on the outside of this well actually we're going to build another class but we're going to build it inside this tuna class and when you do that when you build a class inside a class the class that's inside inherits all the crap from the class that's outside so that's what we want to do so let's go ahead and make this private because it's no need to make it public class and I hit insert class the handler or whatever you named it right there and now we see we get a whole bunch of other error messages implements p implements action listener and I spelled let there we go implements action listener now what we want to do is go ahead and build a body for this and now what we have is our class and why did we need to name it the handler because that's what um, the object was and it implements action listener and what this means is pretty much that this is going to be the class to handle the events and you'll see why later on but I know it's confusing right now but what this action listener class is is it takes one method there's only one method we're going to be building in this class and that's the method that's going to be called automatically 
whenever an event occurs. And to do that, type public void. And I know this doesn't make any sense to you right now. It's weird because you kind of have to build the whole program to see what's going on. But I promise by the end of this, you'll see what's going on. Action, and you need to name this performed. And as a argument, you need to take action event, and then you need to name uh, your variable something like event like that. And now, as well, let's go ahead and start building the body for this. So what happens in this private class right here is as soon as an event occurs, whatever happens inside here is going to handle the event. So let's go ahead and type some stuff to um, pretty much just add a body to our method. The first thing we're going to do is build a string variable and we're just name it string and set it equal to an empty string. And this is going to be the sh final string that outputs, but um, you know we don't need to worry about that now. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is make pretty much a huge if statement and you'll see why in a second. The first condition we're going to test if the event and remember this is like an enter or a click and in this case it's going to be if the event is going to be when the hu oh I can't talk when the user presses enter so if the event equals get source and the source pretty much means where it happens um, if it's equal to item one and what this means is pretty much if they clicked enter on text field number one then what do we want to do well, the first thing we're going to want to do is take that string variable that is empty right now, and we want to set it equal to string format, and we'll we just use uh, C style um, formatting, and we're going to want to set this equal to um, put something like field one uh, percent s, and put those in quotation marks. So what this is going to output is field one with a variable right here and as our variable what we want to do is put event and this is get action command now this is the last thing in this tutorial that's going to confuse you what get action command means after I add my semicolon is get the text from that location so if they type in Bucky in field one and press enter what this is going to do is say alright your event source or you hit enter at item number one so what I'm going to do is put field one equals Bucky and you'll see why later on but for now just follow with me the next thing we're going to do is build three else ifs so else if and just go ahead and copy this copy this paste in event two field two and we'll get the action command for that. Now let's go ahead and just copy this one more time. Copy. Let me make sure my cursor's in the right spot. Oh, cool. It's messing up. Cool. And paste. Uh, if event get sorts equals from item three, then we just want to output field three equals that. And now what we want to do lastly is put else if. And let's go ahead and put event get source. All right, if this event occurs on what do we name it? Password field. Then what do you want to do? Set the string. Why are you messing up, Hoss? Set the string equal to string format and. And let's just go ahead and do the same thing. The format is, um, let's put password field is um, percent s. And the arguments it takes is, of course, event get action command right there. So now, let me make sure. We're good to go. Don't have any errors aside from these. And what error are we getting right here? The method add action there is undefined, which is, uh, we'll worry about that later. And the last thing we're going to want to do, uh, actually, I'm running out of time, so I'll do it in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will finish everything up. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then.